Um, we have a gentleman, former CIA officer involved in counterterrorism operations, counterintelligence investigation, and internal CIA investigations. Following his tenure as a federal agent, he published a book from the Company of Shadows, and I believe, is that the book that's out front on the counter? Yeah, that's what I thought. And um, which you can purchase, like, I guess, unless they're giving them away. You can purchase them after, after the talk. And um, Mr. Ship warns Americans of the staggering decline in the United States, you think? Evidence of the actions of the executive branch. Mm -hmm. um, U.S. intelligence agencies' manipulations and the news media. We don't have enough time for this guy to talk. Let's, we can just do the news media. That would be good. But hopefully we get a little bit of everything. Please welcome, and it's an honor for me to welcome, Mr. Kevin Shipp. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Shipp. Thank you, Roger. Um, one of my assignments with the CIA was uh, as a polygraph examiner. I call myself a recovering polygraph examiner. I go to weekly meetings now, uh, trying to help me get over that. Uh, and I was an internal security investigator and a counterintelligence investigator, and I executed probably thousands of non-disclosure agreements uh, for the CIA. Uh, so it, it's kind of divine providence in that I stood up against the CIA alone uh, for the sake of my family against the misused, not the good system of secrecy, but the misused system of secrecy. And uh, I have some things I want to share. I want to speak specifically to the witnesses that are out there that are afraid of their careers because of the non-disclosure agreement, which I'm going to talk about here shortly. Um, Number one, don't fear. Like the famous saying goes, uh, when the people fear their government, there's tyranny. When the government fears its people, there's liberty. So don't fear your government. And as a duty to your country, which I eventually made the decision to do at some risk, please uh, come out to Congressman Wolf. I beg you. People have lost their lives. This is without question a cover up. And we have a duty to our Constitution and to, to our, the people of, of the United States to come out and see that the truth is told. Uh, that was a, a speech, amongst others, at a press conference for the Citizens Commission on Benghazi. And the government had been threatening some of the Benghazi witnesses uh, from coming out in the open and talking. And uh, they were being called and they were hanging up because they were so terrified of what the government may do uh, to them. Uh, some of them subsequently came out and did talk about Benghazi. You're going to be hearing from a real hero here after me that did. So that's what, what that was all about. Uh, humbly, uh, I, am, uh, I call myself a recovering CIA officer. As I said on the film, I go to weekly meetings. Except for us, they're not 12-step meetings, they're 24-step meetings. First step is don't step out of pictures during, during family gatherings uh, and, and just accept it when you get pre-opened mail, things like that. So, uh, honestly, it took me two years kind of to get that stuff out of my head because that's what happens. We call it Potomac Fever in Washington. It can really affect your thinking, and that's part of our problem. The reason I'm here today, uh, my background is in counterintelligence. I was a counterintelligence investigator, and my job was hunting for moles inside the CIA, and we did have one. It turned out to be Robert Hansen, who was a chief of the FBI working in counterintelligence. So they were there. Uh, so my perspective today from this talk is going to be from that angle. Counterintelligence, looking at, at the current activities of government now, uh, what is going on in the current administration, some of the things that have happened that are not only unconstitutional, they are flat out illegal. Um, we'll go into those into some detail. I am not political. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm not up here to give a political speech. I'm here to analyze what I call uh, a post-constitutional government. We no longer function under a government that abides by the Constitution, as shocking as that is. I think by the time we're done, uh, could you go back, oh, just one, I think? Good, okay, we're good. Thank you. Uh, when we're done, I think it's gonna be shocking what you see. I hope it makes you angry. I hope the people that are watching this uh, live stream on TV or their, their uh, computer, listen to this. 
And I, I exhort you, everything I talk about today, check it out for yourself. Go and research it, because it's quite shocking. Uh, I'm going to talk about a government above the law. The government that we have right now, the administration, I will show you and document that they have broken the law. They have committed multiple felonies. They violated the Constitution on several fronts, and they have, they have committed, uh, without question, what are felonies. I'll talk about when a government lies to its people. We have several government officials that have lied to Congress under oath several times and gotten away with it. If we did that, we'd be in jail for a couple of years. Got away with it. I'll prove, I'll show you exactly what they said. Uh, this is going to be chilling. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, which is the oldest terrorist organization in the world, I'll have some of their quotes, have penetrated our government in the State Department, and they are all the way up into the White House, and they are connected to the President of the United States himself. Sounds shocking? It is, but we'll, we'll prove that it, it's true. Uh, a case for subversion. Uh, from my background, uh, I'll show you this. Uh, I think that our government has been subverted. We're looking at essentially the Islamization of America. And I don't say that lightly. Now, I have nothing against Islam. In my book, I talk about I went over to a dangerous assignment and protected a, a, an Islamic government from assassination, and there was a horrible thing. They were bombing the, the city. Uh, so I'm, this, I'm not talking, I'm not doubting Muslims. I'm talking about radical Islam. I'm talking about the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a radical terrorist organization. Above the law. Uh, I want to stress this because people forget this. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. It is the ultimate law of the United States. Some people think, well, it's just an ideological document. It's kind of just the philosophy of our country. No, in criminal justice, the Constitution is law. And any violation of the Constitution is a felony, punishable by prison. So when, if we understand that the Constitution isn't just a nice philosophical document, it is a legal document that binds all government officials, we understand that, and violating that, the Fourth Amendment, for example, is a felony. Okay, so when we go into that, just remember that. Barack Hussein Obama. People don't know, but he issued a Classified Presidential Study Directive, or PSD 11. It is, uh, and they've pieced this together just from outside comments, it is the President's goal to reform uh, the Middle East and, and North Africa, uh, specifically in the case of opening up to Islam. And it is also uh, speaks to opening the door and supporting the Muslim Brotherhood. Now you see why it's classified. Not even Congress can read this document. Nobody knows what's in there except what's been leaked about connections to the Islamic Muslim Brotherhood. I, I thought this was we the people, didn't you? I thought this was a constitutional government, didn't you? Why is this classified? Not even Congress or Senate, our representatives, can see this thing. Active support of the Islamic Muslim Brotherhood by the President of the United States himself. Uh, uh, they trained, he trained and funded the Muslim Brotherhood, Brotherhood during the takeover of, of Egypt. When they took over Egypt and the, and the Muslim Brotherhood started running Egyptian elections, they instituted Sharia law. They were beating uh, women. <clears throat> they were persecuting and jailing Christians, which is what Sharia, Sharia law teaches. Back in my book, I have a real high-level summary of what Sharia law is so people can see it is really bad. He advocates Sharia law. He supported the Muslim Brotherhood. In, in terms of Sharia law, the thing <clears throat> to mention about Sharia law is Sharia law mandates the overturning of every Western government and the replacement of an Islamic caliphate. What, it, what, what do you call that? The overturning of... of the U.S. constitutional government via Sharia law, which the president holds as part of his belief system? Uh, are you getting that? <laughs> is that serious? Yes, it is. Very serious. Uh, secret payments to Iran in foreign, foreign currency. Heard about that lately? They flew a, an unmarked plane into Tehran with 1.3 billion of your tax dollars on the plane to pay Iran to keep them happy over the nuclear, the Iran nuclear deal. And to buy the way of the, of the U.S. hostages out of Tehran. They wouldn't release the hostages until the plane landed. Now, it gets worse. For the U.S. government to support a country that's number one on the designated State Department terrorist list, which is Iran, to support them financially in any way is illegal. It's a violation of federal law. So what the Obama administration did is they didn't make the payment in U.S. dollars. They made it in Swiss francs, euros and some other currencies to get around, supposedly, get around that law. Are you smelling a rat yet? 
Okay, I wish I could say it gets better, but it, it doesn't. Uh, uh, fast and furious, we all know about that. Secretly running grun guns across the border to Mexico. Two drug cartels and drug cartel leaders. So much so that the Mexican police complained that they were outgunned by these guns that were coming over from the United States. And we know that one wound up killing a border patrol agent. There's been allegations that some of them have wound up in some terrorist events, and, and uh, we'll see. Um, the Affordable Care Act. We all wish that, that people had health insurance, don't we? I mean, they need it badly. So we need, we need a program for the uninsured. There's no doubt about that. But, but uh, of course, what we got was not what we thought we were getting. They bypassed Congress and the states and forced this not just on, on the American people, but on the states themselves. Remember, states are supposed to be self-governed. They forced it on the states and Nancy Pelosi, who I'll talk about in a second in terms of fibbing, and Barack Obama himself knew that there were going to be policy cancellations a year before the law was even passed because they had a big conference and they discussed that probably six million people were going to lose their coverage. So they knew before the law was passed that there was going to be cancellations. They lied about it and said there wouldn't be. When I get into the uh, government lies to its people thing, we'll talk about that. Executive am amnesty, an open wound, I'm sure, for a lot, a lot of you out there. Illegal aliens and Islamic Syrian refugees being resettled in the United States and given citizens' rights. That's illegal. That's against U.S. immigration law. It's illegal. It's a felony. Uh, they're not informing the states that they're resettling these ref refugees. Rick Scott in Florida just came out publicly against Obama because Obama settled Syrian refugees in Florida and didn't even tell Rick Scott, the governor, that he was doing it. That's kind of tyrannical. Rick Scott, who's he's got a good bit of courage, called Obama on that publicly and said, uh, oh, no, you don't. Uh, no voter ID to vote. I'm not even, I'm just going to let that hang there. <laughs> uh, every other country, including ones that are less democratic than we are, you got to have an ID to vote. Refugees and immigrants do not have to have an ID to vote. Now, do you suppose there's a reason for that on the part of the, the progressive movement? Yeah, more voters, right? Who do you think they're going to vote for? People that brought them in. It's an, it's an operation. It's, they've, it's well thought out. Secret prisoner exchange. I'll talk about this later. Uh, Bo Bergdahl exchange for five of the worst Taliban leaders that they captured. Bad guys. He was a deserter. They knew about that ahead of time. That was illegal. You have to go through the Department of Defense and Congress to do that. They didn't. They did it in secret. All right, why Benghazi? My friend Chris... Peranta is going to come up and talk about what it was like on the ground there, as no one else can. But why Benghazi? I've heard it said, ah, Benghazi, it's over. Yeah, it was a terrible thing. The ambassador and, and the other guys were killed there. It was horrible. <clears throat> but we've moved on. There's nothing, there's nothing there. We've done the investigation. The investigation showed there's no culpability. So, so drop it, would you? Well, here's why we're not going to drop it. It was a willful cover-up of a terrorist attack of U.S. personnel. The Department of State and the President and the White House knew it was an al-Qaeda attack three days after it happened. They lied about the Internet video for two weeks after it happened. Lied directly to the American people, to Congress. We'll get into that later. They aided the Islamic Jihadist Revolution in Libya. The Jihadists, if you don't know, and you probably do, have taken over Libya. It is run by the Muslim Brotherhood and al-Qaeda right now. It is a mess. It is a breeding, a breeding and training ground for al-Qaeda operatives right now. It's, it's gone. It's over. Thank you, Obama administration. Uh, a lot of people don't know this yet. They provided arms to al-Qaeda. This is how they did it. Now, for the Obama administration to, to provide arms and tanks to uh, the Islamic jihadists in Libya directly would have been a violation of U.S. and international law, right? Well, this is how they did it. The Obama administration and Secretary Clinton went to Qatar and Saudi Arabia, paid them money, and Qatar, Qatar and Saudi Arabia provided the guns into Libya. Those guns ran from Libya up to the Turkish border and were provided to the Syrian moderate Islam. Is there, anything, is there any such thing as a moderate jihadist rebel? Excuse my, duh. Uh, there's no such thing, and we'll find out why. So, so they armed and funded the Free Syrian Army, covertly, once again, illegally. The Free Syrian Army, many of them, morphed into, guess what? ISIS. ISIS now has U.S. weapons. They're driving convoys of U.S. tanks that the administration refuses to bomb. And they have trained fighters that came from the moderate Free Syrian Army that are now ISIS. I'll show you a picture 
of one of our uh, senators actually hanging out with him. All right, uh, this is aiding and abetting the enemy, folks. The enemy of the United States, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Al-Qaeda, flat out. The president was absent the night of the attack. Nobody knows where he was, and his campaign won't say where he was. He turned it over, even verbally, one is admitted, he just said, over to you on that, take care of it, and he disappeared. Where'd he go? This is the commander-in-chief of the U.S. forces in a crisis in the Middle East, turns it over and disappears. Well, someday we're going to find out where he was. That's one of my personal dreams. They lied to the American people repeatedly about this Internet video, which I'll talk about the government lying over and over and over, knowing it was not so. And even worse, he went before the U.N. General Assembly in 2012, and he told the U.N. General Assembly and the world that it was an Internet video. I mean, how much nerve does this man have? I'm coming up from the perspective of, a, of an investigator. What in the world? Before the world? What kind of ego is that that would do something? I mean, it's, it's, un, it's unheard of. Eric Holder uh, co committed, uh, signed off on the domestic surveillance of Fox News correspondent James Rosen, not just him, but 100 uh, Associated Press journalists. They got their phone records. They got their conversations. They got the conversations of the White House press room where all the press gather and talk about all kinds of stuff they don't put on camera. Uh, they surveilled and got a hold of all those transcripts. Is there a constitutional crisis there? Domestic surveillance, and we'll talk about that say later, but here, uh, now Holder claimed he, had, he knew nothing about it, and we'll talk about that later. Fast and fur Furious, we talked about that. Uh, he engaged in targeting U.S. corporations that were verbally against Barack Obama. But companies like uh, MF Global with John Corzine, who committed $6.2 million of fraud, I think it was, big Obama donor, didn't even investigate it. Selective prosecution by our top law enforcement officer. Uh, wouldn't appoint a special prosecutor for the IRS targeting. Refused to do that. We all know that happened. And uh, I already talked about refuse to investigate individuals and corporations. Thanks. Next one. Hillary Clinton. Oh, gosh. Along with Barack Obama as Secretary of the State, supported the Muslim Brotherhood and issued the leaders visas to enter the United States to talk about the election in Egypt and the takeover of Mubarak and his government. She trained, the State Department did, the Muslim Brotherhood on how to win the election. The State Department influencing a foreign election and training them how to take it over? She provided billions of dollars in aid to the Muslim Brotherhood of Government of Egypt. I think it was 1.5 billion. They gave them F-16 fighters and all kinds of other stuff. While uh, Mohammed Morsi was locking up Christians and, and making, forcing women to wear burqas and all that other stuff, our government is paying him millions of dollars. I think it's, it's 1.2 billion, huge amount. It was a billion. Uh, she has advocated verbally the legalization of Sharia law in America. I say, okay, she's the first one that gets a burqa. Doesn't that sound fair? Yeah, and she can't go out in public without Bill with her. Doesn't that sound fair? fair? But she does. Uh, she promoted the criminalization, along with the UN, of any speech criticizing Islam, making it a penalty of prison by speaking against the Prophet Muhammad or Islam. That should run a chill right down your spine. What's that? That's right. Boom. Bullseye. She can't lock up millions of people. I said, did you get that out there? <laughs> uh, we know about this. Private secret server located in a bathroom closet in a loft apartment in Colorado where she did all of her State Department business. All of it. She, she did not use any of her internal State Department Secretary of Defense computer didn't use that at all inside the, everything she did she did on this secret server now I know from having worked with the, the agency and Department of State she uh, the, the Secretary of State and below they work with a lot of very highly classified information they have to they exchange it back and forth with the agency all the time some of this as the slide says was top secret sensitive compartmented information SCI very sensitive satellite information of Libya what a surprise and, and also information as to Chris Stevens' whereabouts and his travel were on that server. And it gets worse than that. 
Uh, once they found out, once the investigation started in the press and, and then the Congress took it over, oh, oops, she deleted 30,000 emails. Well, they were about Hillary's wedding, she said. Um, boy, that must have been one big wedding, 30,000 emails. Uh, obstructing justice, destroying evidence, with, without a doubt. If that was a lower level employee, it's a, this case is hard and shut. Should have been. She lied to the FBI. I don't know if you've read the 35 lies she told. Uh, did you know there was a secret server uh, that was processed? No, I, I can't recall. Or well, did you know that Brian Pagliano set up the secret server? Uh, I, don't remember, I don't know anything. I don't remember Brian doing that. It's things like that, 35 times. We'll see what the FBI did with that. Uh, she lied, before oath, uh, lied under oath about Benghazi uh, before Congress, along with the shipment of arms. I'll talk about that a little bit later. And of course, what we have now is the Clinton Foundation with donors like Saudi Arabia while she was Secretary of State. And Lockheed Martin, the biggest government contractor for arms, one of them in the United States was a Clinton Foundation donor who happened to have a board member by the name of James Comey, who's now the director of the FBI. See, it just gets more rank all the time. Uh, it's alarming stuff. There's still, she, I think it was 20 positions, government positions within the Department of State. Every single one of them was a donor to the Clinton Foundation and then was appointed after that. And they were, they were foundation donors. So she was appointing people based on their donations. Legal problem with that, anybody? Uh, the FBI is allegedly investigating the Clinton Foundation now. They, ha they don't have a real good track record now, do they? <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I was talking to Chris in the back about this. Do you remember Clinton said, the account accountability board has, has done an investigation of Benghazi and they put it to rest. The report is done, she said over and over. It's, it's, I've been proven, or we've been proven that we did nothing wrong, so, and the media just followed right along, wagging its tail. It's over, drop it. Well, what people don't know, and I've got this, I've read it and studied it, this is where this came from. The ARB only examined the security situation before the attack, and what people don't know, there was no investigation of the attack itself, her actions, or who did the attack. Nothing. Zero. That's what people thought it was, that's not what it was. Uh, Secretary Clinton and other senior officials were, were, she was never investigated. They never interviewed Secretary Clinton, the ARB didn't, about Benghazi, never. Uh, there was no written transcript of the witnesses that they did interview. All low-level employees, and well, we didn't take any records, they said. There's no really, it was just a verbal interview. Uh, it, I can tell you from investigations, you always take, you either take a tape recording or you write things down. I mean, that's just the way it's done. That's investigation 101, for goodness sake. Interviews to expose the ARB when people came out with this stuff were turned down specifically by ABC and CNN. Didn't want to talk about it. Enough said. Okay. James Comey, we know about him. I'll talk about him in a moment. Hillary Clinton's illegal activity with the server. He proved she broke the law and didn't prosecute. Anybody see Trey Gowdy's grilling of James Comey? Oh, was that beautiful? If you haven't seen that, go watch it. You have to watch it. You out there, if you haven't seen it, watch it. You just, you, it's a must-see. Janet Lynch, <clears throat> Comey's boss, had to approve that cover-up of, of Hillary Clinton's criminal activity, without a doubt. Uh, and, of course, we all know about her uh, accidental meeting with Bill Clinton at the airport before Hillary got off. If The more you study about the Clintons, the dirtier it gets. And you think that was just, what did they, they talked about golf and their children, I think she said. You really think that's true? <laughs> well, probably not. Susan Rice has just, well, as of uh, two years ago, just after Benghazi now, Susan Rice was the one that went on six different major news networks and said that the Benghazi attack was caused by an internet video up to two weeks after they knew it was a terrorist attack, right? And when they testified to Congress uh, after lying, she was going to be in a lot of trouble. They were going to bring Susan Rice in, and they, the Congress was. They are going to put her under oath, and they were going to, they were going to investigate her. Well, so what did uh, Barack Obama did? He, had, he appointed her as the new national security advisor, and guess, guess what that gives her? Look at the bottom of the slide. Immunity from testimony in the Benghazi trial. Yeah, Bishop won tonight four. You know? <laughs> Chess move. Uh, now she's, she will never be prosecuted for going out knowingly telling that lie to uh, the American people. Here we go. From my background, I can't, this is, well, it's not shocking. When I, when I was in there, I saw things similar to this. Some of it's in the book. Obama, the CIA under Obama, and John Brennan 
tapped into the computers of Senate staffers on Capitol Hill to get access to the interrogation uh, uh, report that the Senate was writing. The CIA tapped into the Senate on Capitol Hill. Is that registering? That is a felony. It is also a gross violation of the Constitution. They did it. Brennan, the CIA director, oh, thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Brennan, the director of the CIA, even came out and admitted it because, I mean, they had the goods. These people only admit things when you catch them. But he came out and said, yeah, okay, we did it. We're sorry. It won't happen again. Excuse me? Uh, what about uh, a conviction? And it gets worse than that. Surveillance of Congress. Barack Obama's ordered surveillance of the U.S. Congress inside the United States, inside Capitol Hill. This is what they, the intelligence that they got from the NSA. You thought the NSA spying program was over? Conversations with members of Congress, the Israeli Prime Minister, and Jewish organizations gotten from the NSA. Now, notice the targeting is of Israel. I'll get into that later. Israel is targeted by this administration over and over, and there's a reason for that. But it was, they were, they were tapping into a sensitive domestic political debate on the Iran nuclear agreement before the payments were made. NSA surveilling the U.S. Congress inside the United States, a felony, a con major constitutional violation. So, and I've experienced this personally, when you request the government to give account of its criminal activity, initially, the first few times, they refuse to do it because you don't have the need to know it's too classified. And if you keep pressing, which Daryl Issa did, they say, okay, well, all right, we'll give you the documents. Okay, will that make you happy? Well, this is what they gave them. Uh, this, is, this here is fast and furious. Oh, that's a big help, isn't it? Why don't you just take a can of black spray paint and spray it on a piece of... What's the difference? You'll see in my book they did the same... Well, they tried to do the same thing. We kind of got around that a little bit uh, legally. Uh, but this is what they do. If you want to conceal information, th there's a good side of secrecy that used to protect us and we're on a mission overseas. We'd be killed or badly tortured. Uh, it protects our military troops when they're on, on sensitive movements overseas. That's good secrecy. I mean, there is a good system of secrecy. It protects our military and satellite information. That's the good system, but the system has been taken and now it's being used for uh, activity like this, illegal activity. I've seen it personally, participated in it personally. I was there during the Iran-Contra scandal. They do this with impunity. They are, the CIA specifically, is a separate entity from the U.S. government in terms of law. Uh, so if you want to conceal it, classify it. This is what they gave them. All right, let's move on. And I'm, I'll lead up to something here towards, towards the close. Uh, when a government lies to its people, when a government lies directly to its people and its Congress, that is a constitutional crisis, right? We, the people, are supposed to be ruling our government. When the government lies to us with impunity, and not just that, but lies under oath to Congress and our representatives, folks, we're in a constitutional crisis. And you'll see they do it as a routine. Uh, I did it for 10 years until I wised up, and <laughs> went to church and kind of got uh, over that. Anyway, <laughs> and I said there, uh, President Barack Obama lying to the American people. This is our commander in chief, chief leader. Here's what he said. I didn't know about it until I read it in the newspaper. Things like this. <clears throat> the IRS targeting of constitutional Christian and, and other related Tea Party groups. Oh, he didn't know about it until he read it in the paper. All right? NSA spying on Americans. I didn't know about that until I read it in the paper. DOJ, or excuse me, uh, Petraeus' investigation when he was under investigation when Benghazi, a very stinky affair, and they drug it out. Some of us thought he was being bribed to, to stay quiet about the arms running. But anyway, uh, they asked him about that. Oh, I didn't really know about that until I read it in the paper. Fast and furious. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know about that until I read it in the Washington Post. This is the President of the United States. Bugging the phone of the German Chancellor when that came out and, and Germany was outraged. Obama's response was, ah, I didn't know about that until I read it in the paper. The uh, Affordable Care Act policy cancellations, the six million I talked about, oh, he didn't know about that until he read it in the paper. Well, he did. I just proved he did. Uh, he, he knew about it before the act was passed. Uh, so in Watergate, the, the thing was, what did Rick, Richard Nixon know and when did he know it? But here, in this case, it would be, what did he not know and when did he not know it? Uh, when people lie, it's like you have to keep lying and lying and it gets more ridiculous as you go on. That's Hillary Clinton's problem. I, my my, my uh, master's degree is in forensic psychophysiology and that's a fancy word for detection of deception. 
when you lie, you have to tell another lie. And you have to tell another lie, but you forget the first lie, so the third lie gets more ridiculous. And then you realize how ridiculous that lie is, so you have to tell another one, and it, they get worse as you go on. And, uh, and, and more unbelievable and ridiculous. That's how the human uh, psyche works, is in, in that way. You, you just, that's why you don't lie. It doesn't work. Uh, anyway, Benghazi, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, stated this. I have made it very clear that the security cables did not come to my attention or above the assistant secretary level regarding withdrawing security or withholding security from the ambassador. However, a 46-page report by five committees of jurisdiction cites an April 19, 2012 cable bearing Clinton's signature, okay, cites Clinton ordering the withdrawal of security elements from Benghazi uh, for those to proceed. Light under oath. Still walking around. Here we go again. Attorney General Eric Holder, in response to surveilling American journalists inside the United States. This is what he said under oath to Congress. In regard to potential prosecution of the press for disclosure of material, this is something I've never been involved in, heard of, or would think would be wise policy. However, they found uh, the affidavit where he had personally signed off on this surveillance of the press, his signature on it. Maybe he'd taken Ambien before him. I don't know. Uh, secretly subpoenaed records of this Associated Press. His signature is all over these things. He approved the program, he knew about the program, and yet with impunity, he lied under oath. These people don't care, folks. I mean, that's how bad our government, they, they will lie under oath without the slightest bit of remorse because it furthers a cause, which I'll talk about momentarily. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, we have to pass the health care, care bill so you can find out what's in it. Now, that's a goofy statement to begin with. But it turns out that Nancy Pelosi knew that six million policies were going to be canceled well before the bill was passed because they had a big conference with congressmen, senators, and her there, and they estimated that six million policies would be canceled because of this, and she knew it before it was passed. Lied. Do you, anybody see uh, Director of National Intelligence James Clapper's testimony, testimony about the NSA surveillance program? Uh, you ought to watch it. Uh, Mr. Clapper, has the NSA illegally surveilled American citizens without probable cause, without terrorist probable cause? Well, we had a program, and, and uh, the, we have a program in there, and, and we were, no, no, sir, did the NSA spy on American citizens in the United States? Well, we have a variety of programs in the NSA, and, and they're well, Mr. Clapper, <clears throat> did the NSA secretly spy on American citizens? And his response is, I, we used to read body language. His is terrible. He's, you know, he's scratching his head. Oh, well, not wittingly was his last one. Not wittingly. You either did or you didn't. You know, come on. You're the director of national intelligence, for goodness sake. You know darn well what the intelligence agencies do. That's your job. Uh, lying under oath. Now, I want to talk about this because this is important. <clears throat> Why are these people doing this? Why are they doing this egregious stuff? Is it just that they're dishonest? Yeah, but that's not all it is. They describe themselves, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, George Soros, who we'll talk about momentarily, they describe themselves as progressives. You've all heard the word, right? They're a progressive. Now, most people think, well, that's a liberal, and they do have liberal policies like uh, pro-abortion, and uh, they, they go out to other countries like Kenya and try to force them to change their constitution and tie money to it. You know, that, that's the social side, yeah. But there is a political side of this that people need to know about. That It's a playbook that Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, uh, John Kerry, and others are following as progressives. Let's go to the next slide. There's a lot of information on this. I have to kind of, kind of boil it down. This is what progressives believe. Now, if you're a progressive out there, at least, at least now you'll know what you believe. All right, it's important. If you're a progressive, at least know why you're a progressive. They believe in an evolving idea of government and what they call a living constitution, a constitution that can be changed with the times, or with their times, or kind of how, how they want it to be changed. Uh, that government should take on whatever role and size is necessary with no restraint. Progressive doctrine. Find it on the net, all over the place. They want to move beyond the limited perspective of the founding fathers, narrow-minded Men and narrow-minded women, bigots, religious zealots, trying to force religion into the foundation of the cause and had the nerve to put it in the Declaration of Independence. You know, that's what they think. Uh, the limit, they call it a limited perspective. 
They disagree with the founders' concept of government totally. In, in, in this case, government must, the founders and, and, and uh, most constitutionalists, including myself, believe that government must be limited in its size, power, and scope. Anybody agree with that? I've been, in the, I've been in the belly of the beast. I know what the beast will do if it's given too much power. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Uh, progressivism disagrees with the Declaration of Independence. The purpose of government is to protect individual rights, is what the Declaration of Independence says, right? That's what the Bill of Rights is all about, protecting us against government. Well, progressives don't like that. They want the government to rule the people and the government to be more of a social, take care of the people kind of state. They don't like the... Uh, the Declaration of, of Independence of Federalist Papers and other things that say that government should be limited and it should, should report to we the people. They don't, they, they, progressivism believes the opposite. They disagree with the current Constitution. They want the current Constitution changed into a living document, right? They want the First Amendment changed. Cass Sunstein, I'll talk about him in a moment. They want the First Amendment changed to kind of whittle down religious freedom a little bit for all these zealots out there. Uh, places permanent limits on the scope and size of government, which is what the Constitution does. And they, they want to change that. So this is the progressive ideology. This is what these people believe. This is what drives them when they do these things. Their ultimate goal, the end justifies the mean, is they've got to do something to get rid of this constitutional form of government as we have it now. Are you seeing that? That's what they're after. That, that's why, and, and, and they don't care how dishonest they have to be to do it, who they have to support, or what sort of activity they have to do to get that done. That's their ultimate goal. They are connected to this guy, George Soros, multi-billionaire. Uh, he gave $27 million to Barack Obama's campaign. He gave $25 million to Hillary Clinton's progressive campaign. Soros is a die-hard progressive. This is what he said, believe it or not. I admit that I have always harbored an exaggerated view of my self-importance. To put it bluntly, I fancied myself as some kind of god. I carried some rather potent messianic fantasies with me from childhood, which I felt I had to control, otherwise I may, might end up in the loony bin. These are his actions. He has come out publicly and said that he wants to put an end to U.S. sovereignty, because he's a globalist, he wants a global government. That's his, he dreams about that at night, I'm sure. So he has been promoting and assisting and funding the Obama administration with maximum open-ended, open, open non-vetted Muslim in immigration in the United States and other immigration also. Now, we're getting a lot of Syrian refugees in Europe and in the United States. They're, they say the Department of Homeland Security secretary came out and said that these people are vetted. I know because uh, you cannot vet a Syrian re refugee. They have no records in their, there's no criminal justice records in Syria or in these little towns. You can't vet them, it's not possible. Uh, so when they say that, it's simply not true. They do not know, and we're finding this out, they don't, do not know the background of these people. But Soros is behind it. I think his open, OSI Open Society Institute is funding a lot of this to the tune of millions. Uh, more on that later. He, he promotes actively the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and uh, replacing the US dollar as the reserve currency. He's pushing to do that. Do you know what that means? When the U.S. dollar ceases being the world reserve currency, we go into a financial collapse, fast. Uh, they want, he and the U.N. and Obama has come out and said he, he signed off on this. They want to repla replace the U.S. dollar with what's called an SDR. Anybody heard of that? Special drawing right. It's a digital basket of currency out of the IMF where different uh, digital amounts of money are allotted to different countries based on their need. And that's what Soros wants to migrate to is that, special drawing rights. So Soros is big on that. Currency manipulation, he manipulated the currency in Thailand and collapsed the Tha Thailand economy. He manipulated and he made, uh, I think, $6 billion off doing it. He manipulated the, uh, uh, the currency in the United Kingdom and sent them into an economic collapse. One man did that. And now he's trying to man manipulate the US dollar because he knows the best way to get rid of a country, country, country's sovereignty, amongst others, is just to destroy their economy. That is, that's what he's trying to do. And the, UN, the US dollar is in danger. China and Russia just signed an agreement, probably don't hear this on the news, that they will no longer recognize the US dollar as a reserve currency and they want to replace the Chinese yuan, which the IMF just approved. They want to replace the US dollar with that. It's serious. Uh, media matters. He finances uh, pro progressive causes and gives millions to the US news media uh, and influences their reporting. Millions of dollars. Now you hear things, you wonder why things aren't reported by the news? 
thing, important things or why they're changed or spun, follow the money. You know, it goes right up to where the money comes from. Manipulation of U.S. elections. He gave $23.58 billion to left-wing candidates like Obama and, and Hillary Clinton. Uh, this has just come out. Uh, some of his internal emails were leaked. I don't know if you heard about that. They got a hold of some of, some of Soros' OSI emails, one of which said that they're planning an October su surprise, their words, to register millions of progressive Americans living abroad. They want to find all Americans that are living abroad that are progressives and get them to vote to try to defeat the Republican candidate and, and affect the U.S. election system. This is George Soros. Eight million, thank you. Eight million people, that's right. Eight million people is what they're projecting. That could swing an election right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, billions to left-wing progressive Marxist causes. Uh, his target, as Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, they hate traditional America. Because traditional America is the glue that holds America together as it is. Uh, the Judeo-Christian ethic, or whatever you want to call it, is the foundation of our founding documents. Now, whether you're a Jew or a Christian, uh, whatever, if you're a secular person, this has become, is, grown to be the most successful country in the history of mankind under this Judeo-Christian ethic in our Constitution, which mentions our Creator the most successful country known to man, and the most benevolent country known to man. Billions and billions and billions of dollars this country has given to other nations, to the poor and to poverty. So you want to, you want to undo that and destroy that foundation and change that? How stupid can you be and still breathe? And even if you're not, even if you're secular, just think about that. You're, you're, you're destroying the bedrock of a country that has been phenomenally successful. All right, here's a question I get asked all the time. All right, progressives want to undermine the Constitution. Progressives also join hip to hip with uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and Islam. How, how can that be? Because Islamists are supposed to be against uh, moral things, like gay marriage and things like that. They, they despise them. Progressives promote that. How can the two join together? They do. You'll see they do. This is how they join together. They have a common enemy. This is taught in Muslim, and of course progressives espouse this. They have a common, common en enemy, and that's enemy, and that's the U.S. Constitution and the Judeo-Christian, especially the Christian ethic in America. They want that gone because it stands in the way of their goals. Uh, progressive, progressivism. Islam is a convenient and powerful tool to help them destroy U.S. sovereignty. That's why Soros promotes Islamic immigration so heavily around the world, including Europe. It's partly behind the Syrian crisis in, in, in Europe. Uh, Islamic teaching, and I, I encourage you to study, I'm not bashing on Islam, but I would encourage you to study the Quran for yourself. Study it for yourself. Don't listen to what people tell you. Read it for yourself because you need to do that. Uh, it, Islam teaches blasphemy even, corruption and lying, it's called taqiyah, is accepted if it furthers Allah's cause. So if they have to join with progressives who, whose moral side they detest, to overturn Western government, they're good to go. The, the, the Quran even gives them the, the sanction to do that. Okay? Progressive globalists, now down through history, progressive globalists use Islam to destabilize Western nations. I mentioned George Soros, destabilizing the U.S. and Europe. He's a progressive. Islam fits right into his goal. He fits right into their goal. U.K., France, and Germany, and Europe are in serious trouble now because of the refugee situation and the, and the escalating terrorist attacks. Uh, serious trouble. Uh, the Soviet Union, back during communism, used Islamic rebels all the time to engage in terrorist attacks against America and the West. It was one of their cells, one of their operational cell uh, commando units. Ad Adolf Hitler had his own, and Hitler, remember, he thought he was a master race. Everybody else was, was inferior. Hitler had his own Islamic SS to go out and, and kill and blow things up. They were convenient partners. So this, this is what they're doing, and this is why they're working together. Has the Muslim Brotherhood penetrated our U.S. government? Some of, out, some of you out there are nodding your heads. Oh, no, no way, not possible. Come on, man. That's a conspiracy theory, baloney. Uh, you know who invented the, the word conspiracy theory? It's U.S. intelligence and the CIA back when they were doing conspiracies. <laughs> So, yeah, there are conspiracy, conspiracy theories, but some of them are true, frankly. So, you know, if you have an open mind as an investigator, you start with the facts. All right, so has, has the government been penetrated by the Muslim Brotherhood? Next slide. Let's prove it. 
The FBI raid on the Muslim Brotherhood safe house stronghold uncovered what's, what's called the Muslim Brotherhood Explanatory Memorandum. This is what it says. The Ikhwan or Brotherhood must understand that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying the Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house by their hands in the hands of their believers so that it is eliminated and God's religion is made victorious over all other religions. That's what our president believes and supports, folks. Uh, again, at the bottom, a settlement process to build a Muslim population in America, once settled, undertake a grand jihad aimed at eliminating and destroying the Western civilization from within. That is the Muslim Brotherhood's goal out of their own documents. All right? Take that with you. Barack Obama has appointed these men as some of his close national security advisors. Arif Alakan, Professor of Homeland Security and Counterterrorism at the U.S. National Defense University, operational member of the Muslim Brotherhood. Mohammed Elabiri, if I'm pronouncing that right, Department of Homeland Security, appointed by Secretary Janet Napolitano to the Homeland Security Advisory Council. Homeland Security Advisory Council. He's a practicing operational member of the Islamic Muslim Brotherhood. Rashid Hussain, Deputy Associate White House Counsel for National Security and News Media Affairs. Maybe that's why the news media doesn't cover this very well, possibly, coming down from the White House. Yep. Dalia Mogahed, White House Advisory Council on Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. Remember the community, community organizer part of our current president? They never said what he did as community organizer, but a lot of times they'll send radical people into other states to support them. Anyway. Uh, Faith-based and neighborhood partnership legally defended the Islamic Society of North America and CARE, both connected to Hamas. ISNA was founded by the Muslim Brotherhood. She is an operational member of the Muslim Brotherhood and has defended them legally in court. Now listen to this. Uh, they, uh, quote, maybe the most influ influential person guiding the Obama administration's Middle East outreach. She's a member of the DHS working group on countering violent extremism. Uh, could, do you think that's the reason that in Obama's new counterterrorism policy, he labels pro-lifers as violent and racist in, in the Obama's new counterterrorism policy? It's in there. Get it and read it. Came from here, maybe? Could be. Now, here we go. She developed recommendations for guiding government training pro programs and removing radical Islam from all government training. She's an active member of the Muslim Brotherhood. I'll get into government training programs and how they've changed in a moment. These are direct national security advisors appointed to and reporting to the President of the United States on national security. And they're all Muslim Brotherhood members. June 4, 2009, Barack Obama's famous Cairo speech. He quotes the Quran 532 and 9119, trying to make it sound real flowery, flowery and peaceful world religion. What he doesn't do is go on to the rest of those verses. I encourage you to look them up because they talk about the punishment of non-Muslims one of which is crucifixion. They talk about uh, fight against the unbelievers, the Christians and Jews. If they submit, have them pay a tax. If they don't, kill them. That's the rest of those passages that he quoted in Cairo. The Muslim Brotherhood was seated in the front row during that speech. They knew exactly what he was talking about. In the UN, remember, he said the future does not belong to those who slander the prophet Muhammad. Read the rest of that. Uh, uh, Islamic teaching. They shall die and, and shall have their heads removed from their shoulders, essentially. Uh, he approved $2 million of predator drones to Islamic Saudi Arabia, which, by the way, places radical Islamic li literature in U.S. mosques about overturning Western, Western government. They're doing that right now. Approved $2 million of predator drones to Saudi Arabia, $1.5 billion, with a B, to the Muslim Brotherhood government of Egypt, as well as F-16 modern fighters. Supported the Islamic Jihad fighters, including radical groups in Egypt, Libya, and Syria. This is all of PSD-11. Remember I mentioned that secret classified program of reforming the Middle East with the Muslim Brotherhood? That's what he's doing. He's carrying it out. April 2009, he ordered a monogram symbolizing Jesus' name to be covered with a sheet. Ordered the Secret Service to cover it with a sheet. That is a Sharia mandate. A Muslim cannot pray or occupy the same room that has a cross or a Christian symbol in it unless it's covered. He was practicing Sharia law there. 
March 2009, 50 million dollars to the UN Population Agency that promotes abortion, and you, he has promoted abortion all over the world. He tried to get Kenya to change their constitution. It was illegal. They lobbied with 400,000 dollars. He's been doing things like that to, to several countries, a couple of which has come out and said, "Not our country, you don't." Uh, May 2009, I talked about that. Labeled pro-life advocates as violent and racist. Pro-life pro advocates believe in the, in the baby is, has a, a right to live. Violent and racist. <laughs> You know, that's the, that's the wording of propaganda. Uh, May 2000, now what I'm doing is I'm walking you through his actions because he says, I'm a Christian, doesn't he? Right? Uh, and you'll see from his actions, he is by no means a Christian, no more than a, than a piece of sliced cheese by his actions. Oh, you're judging him. And, no, I'm judging his fruit. We can judge people's fruit. And that's what we're doing. We're looking at his actions. Uh, now, uh, May 2009 declines to host services for the National Day of Prayer but he hosts the White House Iftar dinner and attends that. October 2010, deliberately omits the phrase, their creator, from the Declaration of Independence seven times. Took it out, removed it when he quoted it. Took it out. Progressivism? Get it? Joined with Islam? You getting it? All right. Uh, 2010, he avoided all Christian holidays, but he recognized every traditional Muslim holiday. So, the Muslim Brotherhood overtook Egypt. They were forcing women to wear burqas, stay at home. They were locking up Christians. Uh, I think they crucified a few of them also out, out, front of the gates, out front of the gates. So the Egyptian people had enough. And one of the most inspiring uh, movements, social movements of a people happened in Egypt where the people of Egypt overturned the Muslim Brotherhood government and th arrested Mohammed Morsi and put him in jail, put an interim democratic government in there, and they're forming a democratic government as we speak, and they threw the Muslim Brotherhood out. But look at the signs when they were protesting. Obama and Patterson, the U.S. ambassador, you support terrorism in Egypt. There are other signs saying, get out of our country, Obama's a terrorist. Look at the one down at the bottom. You are not welcome in Egypt, Hillary Clinton, supporting the mother. The people knew what the Muslim Brotherhood is. And they knew what supporting the Muslim Brotherhood meant more than the American people do, for goodness sake. And so they threw Morsi out. Now look what, look what Obama did. Uh, within hours, the Obama administration warned the new U.S. government that they would withhold billions in U.S. aid unless they reinstalled the Muslim Brotherhood government. Didn't care whether it was a populist takeover. Could care less. They wanted the Muslim Brotherhood back in there. Brotherhood back in there. Unlike the support and training for the Muslim Brotherhood, they stopped all aid, all training, and all support, and remained silent to the new democratic government. Okay? Are we seeing a pattern here? <laughs> Are we seeing kind of a thread weaving through this? Hillary Clinton approved visas for the Muslim Brotherhood's chief strategist. She trained the Muslim Brotherhood how to win elections. She collaborated with the Organization of Islamic uh, Co Cooperation, OIC, in other words, uh, to restrict free speech rights against Sharia and Islam. I talked about that before. She was behind that, along with the UN. She established a formal relationship with the Muslim Brotherhood. She was right along with Barack Obama doing this very, very same thing together with Egypt and the Muslim Brotherhood. Excluded uh, Israel from global counterterrorism training forums to discuss training, training terror, left Israel out, wouldn't let them in. That fits the pattern. Uh, and finally, waived con congressional restrictions and transferred $1.5 billion to the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood Parliament, our tax dollars. I mean, we, they took our money and they paid for them, basically if you want to boil it down to what it really is. Uh, you heard a lot about Huma Abedin in the emails lately. She is, uh, she's being investigated by the FBI as we speak. Uh, she was Hillary Clinton's deputy chief of staff. Wherever you saw Hillary Clinton, you saw Huma Abedin, except for lately. You don't see her anymore at all, really. Uh, three close family members connected to the Muslim Brotherhood and operatives or organizations. She was directly connected to the Muslim Brotherhood prior, prior to working with the Clinton Institute for Muslim Minority Affairs, which was funded by Abdullah Omar Nassif, who's a major Muslim Brotherhood figure and financier of none other than Al-Qaeda. Hillary Clinton's chief, uh, chief counsel, chief aide, follows her, or used to follow her all over the world. She's mysteriously absent now. Uh, connected directly to the Muslim Brotherhood. John Brennan, director of the CIA. I mentioned before the evidence is there that he's a converted Muslim, right? Uh, John Gundala witnessed his conversion to Islam in Saudi Arabia, chief of station of the CIA, converted to Islam. That's an anathema. When you're in a country in the CIA, you don't go over to the other country. You know, that's called being recruited by, by the target. He became uh, converted to Islam and out of his own mouth, 
In a speech, he said, I visited Mecca and Medina, and it's one of the most inspiring things of my life. You cannot get into Mecca and Medina unless you're a Muslim and you have a letter from an imam proving that you are. Boom. Uh, coordinated the editing, editing of the ben Benghazi talking points and taking out al-Qaeda while the video lie was going on. Obama appointed him as the director of CIA where he presided over what was left of Benghazi and the gun running operations up into Turkey and then into Syria and the recruiting of the Islamic Free Syrian Army slash jihadists. <laughs> he was behind that. Uh, I have friends inside the CIA. Morale is horrible now. Uh, obviously, there's more, there's more to it than that. Uh, that's not good. Uh, John Guindalo was an FBI agent who was there and, and witnessed his conversion uh, to Islam. Some photos. Photo ops with Mohammed Morsi meeting and kissing up with U.S. officials during the time that they were supporting him with everything they could possibly do. What's interesting is there's no pictures of Barack Obama shaking hands. He put all his cabinet-level members out there to do it, but he kept himself from getting photographed. Next slide. However, uh, let's look at the bottom first. 2012. Obama had meetings with representatives of the Muslim Brotherhood in the White House several times. Okay? Obama requested White House visitor logs after that, after it got out in the press, demanded that White House vi visitor logs be secret. So during that time, you go to whitehouse.gov, and this is what you read. Quote, as part of President Obama's commitment to government transparency, we are providing records of White House vi visitors on an ongoing basis online. This is after they said they were secret. That was their official lie slash statement. So they brought the case before a court, Judicial Watch. Anybody know about Judicial Watch? Support Judicial Watch. They're the ones who brought out the Clinton emails. They're the ones who started the whole ball rolling. If you want to support an organization that's protecting our Constitution, they're the ones. Uh, let me put in a plug. That I, you know, I have no, no connection to, to do Judicial Watch, but support them. Because they're really about all we have left. They're the ones who brought this out. So they tried to take it to court, but the appeals court upheld the fact that the White House visitor logs can be secret. I thought this was the people's house. I thought they're visiting the people's house and the people's representatives. That's what I thought. Uh, constitutionally, that's the way it should be. Now, the visitors to Obama on the White House visitor log are classified, guess what? Secret. After the, it was leaked about the Muslim brother. Now we don't know who he's meeting with. Uh, follow the thread. Prisoner exchange, remember this? Secretly, without Congress knowing it, without the Department of Defense knowing it, who both have legal oversight over this sort of thing, in the dead of night, he exchanged five violent Taliban leaders, all engaged in terrorism, secretly released them and traded them for Bo Bergdahl, and they already knew he was accused of being a deserter when they made the change transferred a deserter for some of the worst terrorists that we had captured, and they're out, out there at large, and they're now replenishing the Taliban leadership after we had drained it. Uh-oh. So John McCain went over there to meet with the moderate Islamic rebels, right? The Free Syrian Army. He wanted to go over there and pat them on the back and be in there. Oops. The one on the left was a, an ISIS leader. The one whose picture's in the back morphed, converted into ISIS. He's now an ISIS leader. The one, uh, the one down with the arrow at the bottom he was an al-Qaeda operative at the time this picture was taken. And then you have general, the general of the Free Syrian, quote, Free Syrian Army, all just palling up, and these guys work for the general of the Free Syrian Army. Do you think the Free Syrian Army are moderate uh, Islamicists? No, jihadists. I mean, they're fighting to overturn Syria and replace it with a jihadi government. Uh, that's either stupid or intentional. In my opinion, it's intentional. But John McCain, uh, that was an oops moment. Samantha Power. Ambassador appointed by Obama as ambassador of the United Nations, still there. She wants, she's proposing shifting $2 billion of aid, U.S. aid, going to Israel right now. She is proposing that that aid be shifted over to support the Islamic Palestinians. Uh, she wants to deploy U.S. forces to protect Islamic Palestinians from the Israeli IDF. I have worked with the Israelis four times. I've been there four more times working with a, a big uh, conference speaker. Uh, they're the closest U.S. ally we have in the U.S., and they mean business. We lose them, man. We lose a lot. 
Uh, they want to take troops away and protect the Palestinians again. And I know for a fact, because I've been there, the Palestinians are lobbing rockets into Tel Aviv, and so is Iran, and so is Hezbollah. And the Palestinians are blowing. I went to one place where they blew up a whole restaurant of innocent people. The Israelis are not doing that back. I can tell you, I've been there. I work with. They are not doing that back. So why would you want to transfer millions of dollars from the people who are staging the terrorist attacks over to a U.S. ally? Unless there was some kind of Islamic connection, maybe. Former Ambassador John Bolton, who I, I have great regard for, uh, said this, uncovered this. The Obama administration leaked a story detailing covert Israeli activity in order to foil plans by the country to attack Iran's nuclear program. Uh, Israel had shared with our intelligence, look, we have a plan. If, if Iran tries to attack us with a nuclear weapon, this is what we're going to do to prevent that. They leaked that out to the public. The uh, U.S. government itself, Obama administration, leaked that Israel had been granted access to Azerbaijan airfields along Iran's northern border in case there was a conflict. They leaked that. And listen to this. They leaked, didn't just leak this, they put it in the paper. This is classified, top secret information. They leaked the location, design, specifications of a launch site to be built for Israel's brand new Aero 3 anti-ballistic ballistic missile system, crucial to Israel's protection against Iranian nuclear threats. Obama leaked that, didn't just leak it, they put it in the paper. It ruined the whole Aero 3 program, or at least its, its classified nature. If anybody would have done that in previous in administrations, they'd be looking at 20 years. They would. Or, or maybe treason. Yeah. Purging the military. We're getting close to, to the end here. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up with some statements. Uh, purging the military. Now, if you're going to come in and change a country and get rid of its constitutional government as best you can, as Stalin did, the first thing you're going to do is go in and purge the military from the people that are patriotic to that government, aren't you? Yeah, it's a reasonable operation. He has fired nine decorated generals. Three generals that were fired expressed concern about Benghazi and were sum summarily fired. These are generals, decorated generals that had been heroes in war, were highly regarded, as I said, decorated, fired them on the spot because they said, no, 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 no. Uh, we should have done something about Benghazi. Boom, they were gone. Two generals were fired in charge of the nuclear, U.S. nuclear program. Now, there's more here I wish I could go into about the generals fired in the U.S. nuclear program. There's some, there's some transformation going in there. Uh, going on in there regarding uh, leadership. Kind of scary. 197 military officers, officers fired in the last five years for, exp for expressing or at least being perceived as not getting with the Department of Defense's new transformation. They have all radical Islamic terms in DOD training programs, uh, Isla radical Islamic terrorism, they've been ordered to remove that from all training programs. Islamic Jihad, they've been ordered to remove that from all training programs, and they have fired at least one decorated colonel who was teaching radical Islam. They fired him and ordered them to take those, uh, those terms out of all training. It's out of CIA training, it's out of FBI training, it's out of DOD training completely. You cannot talk about radical Islamic Jihad or radical Islamic terrorism in any government training program now. However, Christian chaplains have been targeted. Some of them have been removed from their position, and the DOD has been ordered to ban all crosses from the chaplain's offices, and they can't give Christian counsel to troops. It's got to be regular generic counseling. So they've sanctioned the, the Christian chaplains. However, no restrictions have been placed on Islamic practices or symbols. You can Google this. These articles are out there. Are you seeing the threat? I love this. We'll wrap all this up with this, because... Your humble speaker <laughs> believes that this is true. <laughs> Obama is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. Go, Clint. Bullseye. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, I'd like to put that up on my wall, you know, in the living room. All right, now we're, I'm going to wrap this up as I get to, to my final points. Webster's definition of subversion, okay? A systematic attempt to overthrow or undermine a government or political system by persons working secretly within that system. From my background, if you're going to engage in subversion or counterintelligence, you're looking for subversion. When they recruit somebody, people have called uh, Barack Obama a Manchurian candidate. I think I don't, that doesn't fit quite well. I mean, it's close, but I, I think, I think it's, a, it's, he's a, it's subversion more than a Manchurian candidate was an old movie. Anyway. Uh, so if you're going to subvert a government from a counterintelligence perspective, this is what you'd be looking for. You're going to carefully choose a person, charismatic, speaks well in person, looks good, 
trained and groomed sometimes for years, waiting for the right time. It was 2008 the right time? Oh, it was perfect. I mean, we were all waiting for a black president. We all wanted one. We wanted to kind of change a little bit. We wanted to be friends with, with the Muslim world if it would stop them from killing us. You know, the, t the t time was perfect. Soros and others come in with millions of dollars. Perfect person, perfect time. Personal background is concealed. Anybody know anything about Barack Obama's college background? Anybody know, has it been publicized what he did as a community organizer? Ever seen that? No, because it's concealed. They have to create a cover story or an identity that's appealing to the target, right? Change, a new America. We're you know, gonna end racism and division. Has that happened? No, it's gotten, gotten worse. And that's part of the plan, frankly, that Soros is, is connected to several of those, those movements. Yeah, yeah, and 70%, well, we can go into that, but, but a lot of these organizations that are trying to instill racial division are funded by George Soros. 70% yeah. of those were bust in from other states. And he was, and George Soros was connecting in Charlotte, that's correct. Now, you may not like how that sounds, but it, again, we're following the facts here, and, uh, you know, if we're Americans and we love this country, we're going to follow the facts as best we can. You college students, follow the facts. Please check out everything we're saying here. Please, it's your country, and uh, we don't know how long this is going to go. Okay, uh, secret mechanisms of financial support. I know when we did counterintelligence investigations, the Russians would secretly finance their moles or their plans inside the United States, and we would find out that there's money coming to this person that, that wasn't, the trail wasn't connecting anywhere. So there's going to be a secret uh, a mechanism of financial support. Of course, the goal is to penetrate high levels of the target government, right? I mean, that's, that's like the cartoon where the cat looks at the little chicken and, and sees a, a smoking drumstick. I mean, that, that's, that's Soviet paradise, man. Gets, and that's happened. Soviets penetrated the OSS, which is the precursor of the, the CIA. Uh, gain control of the, of the target's news media. That has happened throughout history in terms of communist uh, and subversive coups. First thing they do is they get control of the media. Well, how do you do it in a free society? Ching, ching, lots of money, George Soros. But billions of dollars into news organizations. The editors get paid. They're connected to GE, some of them, which is a big government contract. It rolls downhill from the editor who tells the reporters, don't report on these things. If you do, you lose your career. The young reporter doesn't want to lose their career, so they just follow suit and don't report on that by not reporting on something is just as bad as twisting it when you do. Okay, compromise the target country's defense so the enemy forces can penetrate. Enough said there. Secretly open backdoor access enabling en enemy forces to enter the old Trojan horse idea. Open the borders secretly. Let people come on in that subscribe to your particular paradigm or philosophy, what have you. So let's look at this. Uh, are we witnessing a subversion in America of the U.S. government? I mean, we're doing a logical analysis here. Let's go through it. Breaking U.S. law to support Islamic resistance fighters, in the case of Libya, without Congress's knowledge. Okay? Supporting Muslim Brotherhood governments and movements in Egypt, Libya, and throughout North Africa, aiding and abetting the enemy. The Muslim Brotherhood seeks to dismantle and overturn Western and the U.S. government. Governments. Okay? Appointing members of the Muslim Brotherhood to national security positions, not Department of Education, which they're, they're manipulating that too, not, not, not some civic organization. We're talking national security position, directly connected to the, to the President of the United States. Secret meetings at the White House with brother, Muslim Brotherhood and radical Islamic rep representatives, which are now classified secret. Through the UN, working to criminalize speech critical of Islam to make speaking against Islam a crime punishable by prison, okay? Covering up radical Islamic connection to domestic terrorism. Remember Fort Hood? Workplace violence. That was not work, workplace violence, more than the man in the moon. Well, you know, they've even removed that label now. Uh, every time there's a terrorist attack, a radical terrorist attack, do they come out and say that it was, a, it was a radical Islamicist? No, they leave it out. This is the media leaving it out. Remember that connection that goes up, follow the money? Forcing Islamic teachings in public schools, that's happening in public schools. They're teaching the Quran, making them get down on rugs and learn how to pray, whether they like it or not. Now, I'm not downing religious freedom. I love religious freedom, but they're not doing that for other religions. Just that one. 
supporting Islamic governments that practice terrorism, Iran, executive orders undermining Ju Judeo-Christian culture in America, transgender bathrooms. Now, if a person wants to practice their preference, uh, we were talking earlier, we've worked with people in the field that were of, of a different sexual preference. You know, it wasn't a problem. But they're pushing that on America, and they're forcing it on the states. They're demanding that the states have transgender bathrooms. The states are saying, we don't want to do that. The federal government is not supposed to be able to control the states like that. But the, the culture, the traditional culture of America, which is what has enabled us to get where we are, is being assaulted. Because it doesn't fit the progressive Islamic model. Sorry, it's just so. Avoiding Christian holidays and celebrating all Muslim holidays. I was told, before I left the CIA, we were ordered to come into it, and I've got a couple more minutes here. We were told to come into the conference room. We had an order from the director. So we all filed in there like good troops. My division chief, who's a good guy, said, uh, you know, this is not coming from me. It's coming from the director, so please just, just understand. You are hereby ordered. You can, never, you can no longer say Merry Christmas in any CIA office space. If you do so, you will receive administrative action. You can't have manger scenes on your door or on your desk. You got that? The, the, word, the bad thing was only two of us were like, what? Everybody else was like, okay. So we went back to our desk. This was Christmas Eve. So I went home that night and uh, thought about that. I have this thing. I, love, I have this love for the Constitution. I just can't seem to get rid of it. Uh, so I went in the next day at Christmas Eve, and I walked out and turned around to, the, to all the cubicles and said, good night, everyone. And by the way, Merry Christmas. Now, what do you think happened to me? I, I have found out when it comes to real radical progressives, they're like the Wizard of Oz, big scary face. If you don't do this, you'll get sued or fired or whatever. And then you pull the curtain and there's this little man behind there controlling the levers. All they understand is you get right back at him. Oh, no, you don't. No, no, not to my constitution, you don't. Not to my freedom of speech. You, oh, no, 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 you don't touch that. That's where I draw the line. Now, when you do that, they all go, okay, we didn't really mean that. And that's what happened with the CIA. After, after the firestorm started, they backed off and said, well, uh, never mind, you know. But, but if nobody had done that, that, that would be the rule of the day there. Uh, sanctioning Christian military chaplains, firing them, taking them, ordering them to take the crosses out, but promoting Islamic activity within the military. Again, I'm not downing Islam. I'm just telling you we're seeing a thread here, a serious threat. Right? Firing a large number of military officers who disagree with the transformation and promotion of Islam. Remember I, I talked about subversion, one of the steps that you do? You've got to weaken the military, right? Supporting uh, support for Islamic Jihad fighters, we've talked talk about this, but several cases of that. Ignoring the Christian Holocaust that's occurring in the Middle East. Uh, the estimations that I read, it's been almost a year ago, 100,000 Christians have been killed in the Middle East. Badly. Crucified, heads cut off. Some of them are children. Some of them, some of them are as young as three years old. Brutally murdered. Have you heard anything about that from this administration? One thing. A mention of it. Have you heard anything about that from the news media? What a horrible thing. Has it been on CNN? Has it been on, a has it been on any of them? Why? This is a Holocaust becoming equivalent to Nazi Germany in, it, in the number of people that are being brutally, not just executed, brutally murdered. Not a, a peep, total silence. Singling out Israel for retribution over and over. Who's Israel's greatest enemy? Islam, right? Iran. They want Israel wiped off the face of the map. Israel has been targeted, as, as I have shown several times by this administration. No other country, Israel, fits with the threat. Leaking Israeli defense information shared with the U.S. even classified. Nobody else, is, not, not Egypt, certainly, Muslim brother, no, no, Israel. Spying on co congressional communications with Israel. The NSA eavesdropping on Congress in their discussions with Israel about the Iran nuclear program. Are you shocked and angry yet? Yes. I mean, people out there, man, you gotta be angry about this stuff because ha we have to be motivated. We have got to do something about this. Using the civil rights movement to advance Islam and promote racial division. Obama is directly behind and so is George Soros. I'm gonna make this statement directly. They are directly behind and connected to, to some of these racial uh, um, protests that we see, and I'm talking the, the violent ones, they're directly connected to that, I'm sorry. Because you talk, you talk to a lot of the black population, they want nothing to do with that stuff. Even the president himself is fomenting this. 
And it's not just racial equality. It is promoting division, divide and conquer, dividing the United States right down those lines. Black Americans, white Americans, don't let this happen. This is our country. We've got to stop this. You stop it through unity. We're all Americans. We, that's where we have to go. There are wonderful churches out there that are, are multicultural. I have a pastor of one of them sitting out here. Uh, black, white, Asian, young, old, and you, you don't even notice race there. Dave McLennan, a pastor from Statesboro. You don't even notice race there. Everybody has, they're all unified around the Christian belief in that particular church. It's just not there. Unity is the answer. That's how you defeat that stuff. Okay. Uh, influencing the news media to conceal radical Islamic activity. Remember we talked about taking over the news media, one of the fundamental goals of subversion, blocking the FBI from investigating radical Islamic activity in U.S. mosques, even though there's probable cause there are weapons in there. An operational plan had been ordered not to do it. Appointing a Muslim CIA director who's now in charge of covert operations supporting jihadist rebels. Use of the NSA to eavesdrop on congressional communication. Talked about that. Uh, secretly paying millions of tax dollars to the Islamic government of Iran. Keep going. We talked about that. In violation of U U.S. law, transporting Syri Syrian Islamic refugees into the United States secretly and giving them voter rights. Remember, open the door to your enemies. Supporting the invasion of Europe with Islamic refugees, Soros connection, promoting globalism and the progressive Isl Islamic connection. Billions of dollars, Muslim Brotherhood, overturning the government of Libya, which is now controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood, demonizing Russia because Putin came out and said, I will have nothing to do with you pushing Islam on my country. Believe it or not, Russia is 80% Orthodox Christian. And he told Obama, no, no, not here. You are not going to do that to my, as a matter of fact, he's banned the Koran. Uh, uh, you're not going to do that in my country. And so, uh, and you're not going to come in in Syria with these rebels either and start, and start uh, over, trying to overturn this. He's now being demonized as the new Stalin, of course, which is what they do. But that's, that's uh, we may have a new cold, new cold War because of this. And as a matter of fact, it looks like that is starting. Putin is starting to deploy subs. He's talking about re-instituting uh, the KGB, God forbid. Uh, and we are, we are looking at the beginning, potentially, of a new world war. Next slide, guys. All right, wrapping it up here. So uh, I wrote an expose on some of this stuff. I go into Sharia law in the book, Radical Islam. I talk about the use of secrecy to cover up, for cover-ups and things like that. Um, uh, and go to the next slide, and I'll show you as I wrap up here. Apologize. This is what they did to the book originally. Did, have you seen this sort of thing before? <laughs> it, there's nothing classified here. This is talking about a, a negligence that happened where family almost died. Nothing classified, but they blacked it out anyway. Next slide. Remember this? Same kind of thing. Next slide. So uh, what I did in this particular case, and that's a photograph of one of the actual uh, young men who almost died because of this, I built a code into the book. Uh, so if you follow the code, it'll, it will reveal uh, what the government did. These, these blackouts are illegal. This family almost died. That's what they didn't want people to know. We have to, within proper civil constraints, learn to stand up and not be afraid of tyranny. And uh, that's what that was all about. Next slide, please, guys, thanks. So along those lines, as I finish, since they black out things that they don't want us to know, uh, look at the Declaration of Independence and look what I have in bold there. Uh, Stance which the law of nature and nature's God, nature's God bolded. We hold these truths to be self-evident. We've been endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, in, uh, deriving their power from the counsel of the governed and the right of the people to alter or abolish that government and to institute a new government if that government becomes tyrannical. That's our document. That's our founding document. Now let me show you, if that was released today, what the government would do to it. Go ahead. There is the government approved version right there. If that was today. Seriously. Uh, okay, guys, next slide. So, just in closing, we're in danger, and we're in danger from within. Uh, in my mind, there is a subversion going on in our government. It is a transformation. Oh, it's change, all right. It's a subversion aimed at our Constitution to change it or overturn it to destroy the Judeo-Christian foundation of this country that made this country great to eliminate or, or uh, dismantle or or take the power away from our military and to change our entire society away from what it's been for the last 200 plus years. It's happening right now. We are at a turning point. I'm not political. We have an election coming up here. And this is serious. 
It is so bad, as I have shown in our government and the subversion in our government now, it is so bad and so entrenched that if we don't get an administration that gets in there and changes this, it could be over. I mean, really, our American experiment in freedom, it could be over. It's that serious. Uh, I would uh, exhort uh, pastors and synagogue leaders and others, uh, it's time to stand up. I happen to have one here that's pretty courageous, which I admire. There are other pastors that won't come out from behind their pulpit because they're too, they're too afraid. If we, don't, if we don't come out and talk about this stuff, we're going to lose our religious freedom. 27 pastors sacrificed themselves in the, in the revolution to get what we have now. If you have to, if you're a pastor, appoint somebody that's willing to, like a lamb at a gyro feast, put them, so appoint somebody to go out like me and talk about this stuff, you know, and uh, maybe has a target on their back. I don't know, but, but you got to do it. We got to publicize things on the internet, social media. We got to talk about it. We got to join organizations that's, that's, that are, are fighting against this sort of thing. We have to financially support political candidates standing up against this. We have to take action. The time for apathy is over. The time for the kind of the American cowardice, I just want my pension and pension, but I just want to, I want to kind of stay low until I retire. That's over. We're going to lose our retirements probably next term. So I, I just exhort you in closing, we all love this country. We love our Constitution. Our Constitution is in danger. So stand up. Remember the man behind the curtain, the big scary face and the little man behind the curtain. Don't forget that. Don't be afraid. Last slide. My favorite quote. When, when people fear their government, there is tyranny. When the government fears its people, there is liberty. And we'll always remember. Thank, thank you all very much. I appreciate it.